Chapter 3 The Grabbit Gnomes It was such fun to have a real live pixie to play with. Molly and Peter went to their playroom every day and talked with Chinky, whom they had so cleverly rescued from the giant's castle. He refused to have anything to eat because he said he knew the fairies in the garden and they would bring him everything he needed. Chinky, will you do something for us? asked Molly. You know we can't be with the magic chair always to watch it when it grows wings. But if you could watch it for us and come and tell us when you see it has wings, then we could rush to our playroom and go on another adventure. That would be lovely if you did do that. Of course, said Chinky, who was a most obliging, merry little fellow. I'll never take my eyes off the chair. Well, will you believe it, that very night, just as Chinky was going off to sleep and the playroom was in darkness, he felt a strange little wind blowing from somewhere. It was the chair, waving its wings around. Chinky was up in a trice and ran out of the playroom to the house. He knew which of the rooms was the children's, and he climbed up the old pear tree and knocked on the window. It wasn't long before Molly and Peter, both in warm dressing gowns, were running down to the playroom. They lighted a candle and saw the chair's red wings once more. Come on, cried Peter, jumping into the chair. Where are we off to this time, I wonder? Molly jumped in too, and Chinky squeezed himself beside them. The chair was indeed very full. It flew out of the door and up into the air. The moon was up and the world seemed almost as light as day. The chair flew to the south and then went downwards into a strange little wood that shone blue and green. Hello, hello. We're going to visit the Grabbit Gnome, said the pixie. I don't like that. They grab everything they can, especially things that don't belong to them. We must be very careful that they don't grab our wishing chair. The chair came to rest in a small clearing near to some queer toadstool houses. The doors were in great thick stalks and the windows were in the top part. No one was about. Oh, do let's explore this strange village, cried Molly in delight. I do want to. Well, hurry up then, said Chinky nervously. If the nab grab it gnomes see us here, they'll soon be trying to grab this, that and the other. The two children ran off to the toastal houses and looked at them. They really were lovely. How Molly wished she had one at home in the garden. It'd be so lovely to have one to live in. Whatever is Chinky doing, said Peter, turning around to look. He's got a rope or something, said Molly in surprise. Oh, don't let's bother him, Peter. Do look here. There are six little toadstools all laid ready for breakfast. Fancy. They use them for tables as well as houses. Suddenly, there was a loud shout from a nearby toadstool house. Robbers! Burglars! Someone was leaning out of the window of a big toadstool house, pointing to the children. In a trice, all the grabbit gnomes woke up and came pouring out of their houses. Rubbers, what are you doing here? Rubbers? No, no, they're not, said Chinky, pushing his way through the crowd of excited gnomes. They're only children adventuring here. How did you come? asked a gnome at once. We came in our wishing chair, said Molly. And then she wished she hadn't answered, for the grabbit gnomes gave a yell of delight and rushed off to where the chair was standing in the moonlight. Oh, we've always wanted one of these! <laughs> let's take it for ourselves, they shouted. Come on, let's take it safely to our cave where we hide all our treasure. But it's ours, cried Peter indignantly. Besides, how should we get back home if you take our chair? But the gnomes didn't pay any attention to him. They raced off to the chair and soon there wasn't a tiny piece of chair to be seen. For, to Peter's dismay, all the little gnomes piled themselves on it and sat there on the seat, the back, the arms, everywhere. Go to our treasure cave, they shouted. The chair flapped its red wings and rose up. The gnomes gave a yell of triumphant delight. Oh, we're off, goodbye. Oh, look, said Molly suddenly, there's something hanging down from the chair. What is it? It's a rope said Peter. Oh, Chinky, you clever old thing. You've tied it to the leg of the chair and the other is tied to that tree trunk over there. The chair can't fly away. No, 
said Chinky with a grin. It can't. I know those grabbit names. I may not know what free sevens are, but I do know what robbers those names are. Well, they won't find it easy to get away. The chair rose up high until the rope was so tightly stretched it could go no further. And the chair came to a stop. Then it hovered in the air, flapping its wings, but not moving. One scrap. The gnome shouted at it and yelled, but it was no good. It couldn't go any further. Well, the gnomes are safe for a bit, said Chinky, grinning. Now, now. what about exploring this village properly, children? So the two spent half an hour peeping into the quaint toadstool houses, and Chinky gave them gnome cake and gnome lemonade, which were perfectly delicious. All this time, the gnomes were sitting up in the wishing chair, high above the trees, shaking their fists at the children and yelling all kinds of frets. They were certainly well caught, for they could go neither up nor down. Now, we better go home, said Chinky, suddenly pointing to the east. Look, it will soon be dawn. Now listen to me, I'm going to pull that chair down to earth again with your help. We'll pin it down quickly and it will land on the ground with such a bump that all the gnomes will be thrown off. Whilst they're picking themselves up, we're jumping the chair and off we go. Good idea, grinned Peter. So he and Molly and Chinky went to the rope and pulled hard, hand over hand. The chair came down from the air rapidly and when it reached the ground it gave such a bump that every single gnome was thrown off. Ah! they cried. You wait, you wicked children. But they didn't wait. Instead, the three of them jumped into the chair and Peter called out, Take us home, please! Before the grabbit gnomes could take hold of the chair, it had risen up into the air, but the gnomes pulled at the rope and down the chair came again. Quick, cut the rope, shouted Peter, Peter to Chinky. Oh, poor Chinky. He was feeling in every one of his many pockets for his knife, but he couldn't find it. The gnomes pulled hard at the rope, and the chair went down further still. And then Chinky found the knife. He leaned over the armchair, slashed at the rope and cut it. At once the chair bounded up into the air free. Home! Home! sang Peter, delighted. I say, talk about adventures. Every one seems more exciting than the last. Wherever shall we go next? That is the end of the Grabbit Gnomes. Our next chapter, chapter four, is called The Ho Ho Wizard. <laughs>